Okay, if I said, Simon says, stand up, show me what you would do. Okay, it's pretty simple. If I said to you, Simon says, turn around, show me what you do. If I said, Simon says, gives Ruth Probert a fiver, what do you do? No? Nobody? (laughs) But it's funny, isn't it? Like, we play that game when we're kids, don't we? And somebody tells us we have to do what Simon says. But, you know, when we, when we do it, we're only doing it because somebody told us to do it. Otherwise, we might be out. And nobody wants to be out. Now, I do have a clicker, but it's, it's missing somewhere. But I have a lovely slide which has a big life question on it. What do I click? Someone help me. The right one, that one. I'm great with technology, just so good. Oh, wrong way. Who the badger is, is Simon? Who on earth is this Simon that we're all convicted that we should follow? Um, I think we've got a funny thing around the word follow now. And probably that is to do with a small little blue bird, the Twitter bird. And Jesus asks us to follow him. And this just makes me laugh when Jesus says, no, I'm not talking about Twitter. I literally want you to follow me. (laughs) You know, what does this word follow mean? And I I love Twitter, okay? I'm not having a rant about Twitter because I actually love it. But I have an issue when we think that we should follow Jesus like we'd follow somebody on Twitter. Because let me tell you, it does not work. (laughs) <laughs> I've got no explanation for that slide, but last night I thought it was quite funny. So we'll move on. Okay, following Jesus does not work, Twitter style. Number one, because you could follow Jesus and follow anyone else you want to. Jesus isn't like that. Jesus is Lord and he demands 100% commitment from you. You can't pick a mix with Jesus. He doesn't fit in a pick a mix box where you can grab something else as well. It's Jesus and Jesus only. And so you can't follow Jesus and culture and all sorts of other things at the same time. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because if we follow Jesus, like we follow someone on Twitter, he'd always be at arm's length. I was quite chuffed with that little analogy. Um, He'd always be at arm's length. And Jesus can't be at arm's length. He needs 100% of your heart. And he wants an intimate, powerful relationship with you. He doesn't want to be at arm's length. He wants to be working powerfully in your life and then out through your life into the world. Because you don't need to resolve to um, to follow someone on Twitter. You click a button and you're following them. And George has hinted at this a little bit, and I'm just going to continue, that following Jesus demands resolve. It demands a choice every day that we're going to stand for what Jesus stands for, and that we're going to follow him. Before I went to university, my youth leader told me that not a lot, or quite a lot of Christians lost their faith at uni. And that absolutely frightened me. I, I didn't want it. I just thought, I can't imagine my life without, without Jesus. I, I don't want to lose this. And so I determined that that was not going to happen to me. So I, I found Bible studies that I could take with me for my first week. I went to every single Christian event I could in the first week just to make some Christian friends. Um, And I started praying that at university, my faith wouldn't get less, but it would get more. And I am so grateful for that person who said that to me. Because I realized if I wanted to come out the other side, I couldn't coast with Jesus. He had to be everything. And I had to get ready that I still wanted to serve him and I was going to follow him. We've got to resolve to follow Jesus. To be a radical disciple you need sticking power. And the other thing about following Jesus, if you were going to follow it Twitter style, it wouldn't cost you anything. It wouldn't mean anything. The life of following Jesus costs. We know that. But you know what? It means so much. It is so precious. And during my uni years, I remember walking down the street that I walk down every day, Cate's Terrace, some of you will know it, 
And someone had put a poster in the window, and it was this massive rant about how much they hated God and why he wasn't real. It's quite funny, isn't it, when people hate God but don't think he's real? Um, but they had that all across their window. And I walked past it a few times. I was like, oh, Lord, that just breaks my heart. They just don't know who you are. And I was walking past one day, and I just knew in my stomach, God is saying, you need to knock that door. Thanks, Lord. <laughs> and for someone who actually can be pretty shy, I was like, Lord, I'm just going to be like this crazy lady. Busy street. Everybody's walking past me. They're going to be watching me. I just knew I had to do it. So I knocked the door. And this guy answered, and he'd been really hurt by the church. And I was able to say, the God that you think that you're proclaiming on your window is not the God who is real. I know this living God, and he is loving, and he cares about you, and he's passionate about you. And I don't know where this guy is, but I know that, um, that I was able to tell him. And the reason I share that story is that cost me something. It might not be a, tr- you know, a one-way trip to India never to return, but it cost me something to stop and knock that door. But what I had to give, the truth of Jesus Christ, was far too precious, far too meaningful for me not to do it. Jesus, following him, costs, but it is the best thing that we can do. And I've just got a quote, and it's from a guy called Alan Hirsch. And he says this, if we don't disciple, which means tell other people and train them how to follow Jesus, the culture sure will. I think actually I've got this on a slide. Oh no. Um, If we don't disciple, the culture sure will. And it's doing a good job of it. We are being profoundly discipled every day by a very sophisticated system called media and advertising. Trillions of dollars are put into it to manipulate our sense of self, self, our sense of worth, to create desire. Consumerism is without doubt the secular religion of our day. Does anybody else want to say no? No, actually? You know, I don't want to see this, talking about that holy discontent. I want to see people on fire following Jesus. And, but we've got to decide with ourselves, who is discipling us? Are we disciples of Jesus or are we disciples of Primark? <laughs> um, you know, what, what is it that we follow? And I just wanted to summarize it with this. There is no neutral. Everyone follows something. And our culture is doing a fantastic job of gaining followers. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could say that about the church? The church is doing a fantastic job of gaining followers because of the truth of what we have of Jesus Christ. But amazingly, the followers that Jesus first had, if you read about them in the Gospels, wow, what inspiration. They could be reckless, they could be idiots, they didn't have it together. And so sitting here today, don't feel like you've got to have all your stuff together. Jesus has got time to work with you and he wants to work with you. And it's for his glory that he pours his strength and he pours his abilities and his love into our hearts. So don't be put off that you can't be a follower. Look at the initial 12. (laughs) I just love that. By the way, if anyone's, I did think, is that a little bit offensive? But then I thought, Jesus, as a man with blonde hair, offends me more than the fact that someone put glasses on him. Because he would never have looked like that anyway. But he only had 12 followers at the beginning. And those men went to found the church and change the world through his name. He can start, look at us in the room. We might not be a big number, but if we got radical about Jesus, our city would change. Our city would totally change. Jesus only had the 12. But sometimes I think we just think it's it's all too big. I can't do do this big radical discipleship stuff. I just want to say start today and start where you are. And I've got some heroes, and I've got a hero who lives in my community, She's 16, and she's here today. And she's a hero to me because she's the only Christian in her family. And I know, I remember her telling me once that her mum was going through just a little bit of a bad time. And she said to her mum, mum, you just need Jesus. She's a hero to me because that's a radical disciple. There's another guy who I know is here today who started a prayer group in his sixth form. He got people together, and they started praying for their school. That's radical discipleship. That's stepping up for the kingdom. He's a hero to me. 
but there's another girl who's here, and she is a radical disciple, and she's a hero of mine because after university, she didn't choose to start following a career, and that's right for some people. But actually, she became an intern, and she's now moved into the local community, and she is reaching people in Jesus' name. And she chose, instead of going up the ladder, to step down. She's a hero. Don't be put off by thinking that it's too big. Start where you are. And I just want to put up a verse here. And when um, we came up with the concept of speak, one morning I was in the bath, um, because I didn't have a shower at that time, but I do now, which I'm very proud of because it's taken a year. But we have a shower. Anyway, I'm talking about being in the bath. Um, and I was in the bath, and I was thinking about speak. And I was thinking, what is the one thing that I just would desperately love to say? And it is this. It is this um, verse. Choose this day who you will serve. For as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose this day. Walking with Jesus is a choice every day. And there are distractions, and they are going to want to pull you left, and they're going to want to pull you right, and they want to, they want to show you that there are the better ways. But guys, there is not. Jesus is the only way, and he is the best way. And if I could get any of you this morning to resolve that you are going to follow Jesus tomorrow and the day after and next year and in 10 years' time, then everything to do with this conference is worth it for me. And so um, just a couple of things out of this is that I'm passionate about this. And so if you are 16 to 18 in the new year, we're going to be starting a Bible course for people who just want to get serious And um, I'm going to be there, and we're going to invite other speakers. But if you're just thinking, how can I step out next, come to that. Um, And also, um, beginning of next year, we're going to do a month of devotion. It's called Raise the Bar. And it's about how can I get deeper into the Bible? How can I live that Christian life for Jesus? And it's a challenge to read this devotion every month. And my prayer is that it will change your life. And so, choose this day who you will serve. But as for me, I'm going to serve the Lord. Thank you.